Um, we have uh, a cave trip, which we'll talk about uh, uh, in a few minutes. Water in the bottom of the crack just to see what would happen. It took 48 seconds still. So. Between 2014 and 2018, the Snowy River Passage was inaccessible due to flooding, but in late 2018 it dried up just long enough to allow a few exploration trips before the cave closed for the bat hibernation season. During this short window, teams were able to survey 3 miles, extending the total length to 35 miles. In 2019, the caving season opened with more flooding, but by the end of the summer the Snowy River Passage dried up again though a trip to the far upstream end was turned back when they discovered pools and short zones of flowing water that barred travel. During October of this year, three marathon caving trips were approved to visit Bliss Borehole, which diverges from Snowy River prior to the intermittently flooded section. This upper-level paleo trunk passage is now being described as the second longest cave passage in the world. These three survey trips, which took place over a two-week period, each lasting between 36 and 43 hours, resulted in five and a half miles of new exploration and survey. Fort Stanton Cave has a single entrance and trips to Snowy River begin by traveling through the large trunk passage of the main corridor and Conrad's branch before reaching Don Sawyer Memorial Hall. A 50-foot dig shaft at the far side of this room leads to the Mud Turtle Passage and Snowy River. To travel on Snowy River, we perform a complete change to clean gear, including non-marking white-soled shoes. There are a few dirty travel zones, including Independence Hall, Two-Way Hill, and Mount Airy, that require either changing back to dirty cave gear or wearing dirty shoes or shoe covers. These steps are necessary to minimize impact of the white calcite Snowy River formation, but makes our cave packs much larger and heavier than they would be in most caves. Most of the travel on Snowy River is easy walking, but a round trip to Snowy River South involves two trips through the crawl from hell, for more than 4,000 feet of crawling, where packs must be rolled.
2011, the realm of the floating islands section of Snowy River was explored, and the team noted two large leads in the ceiling that they named Higher Hopes. It wasn't until 2014 that a team returned to these leads equipped with large plastic tarps to protect the Snowy River formation from loose debris that gets knocked down during the climb. What they found was 30-foot diameter borehole going both north and south away from the Snowy River Passage. The original exploration team mapped nearly 9,000 feet to the south and left the northern passage as a lead, not knowing that flooding of the cave would prevent a return trip until 2018. When a team finally did return, they were able to survey nearly a mile through complex breakdown to a trunk passage that continued to the northeast. During the final survey trip of 2019, our team had to travel out to Leeds at the far end of extensive surveys from the previous two weekends that totaled more than three miles. Total travel time to these Leeds was more than six hours from the entrance, and because there was no water source in this portion of the cave, we each had to carry six to seven liters of water. We took a little time to improve the flagging so that impact from travel is isolated to a single trail. Fort Stanton Cave contains numerous areas with calcite or flowstone on the floor that requires clean shoes to cross. There are also many sections of mud, and to deal with these transitions, teams are now carrying two sets of supportive shoes as well as two sets of sturdy shoe covers. One set of shoes and covers are for traveling across dirty sections, while the other set are for clean sections. Despite carrying all of these sets of footwear, we still sometimes find ourselves caving in socks.
3 a.m., after 18 hours of caving, we found a nice flat area in the passage we were surveying that wasn't too muddy, so we took advantage and bivouacked for six hours. We went straight from surveying to sleeping and back to surveying again, but this gave us the energy to go another 18 hours. As time began to run short, and the quality and quantity of remaining leads dwindled, we investigated a small lead 30 feet above the floor of the main passage that required a bit of exposed climbing to reach. This small, three-foot-high hole soon opened into what we call the super borehole, and then into an elaborately decorated area filled with velvet flowstone, which we named Scorched Earth. A low-level room in a flowstone-coated dry pool basin was discovered just prior to leaving Scorched Earth. The room contains an amazing display of rare pool fingers that rivals the best that can be found nice. in Lechuguilla Cave. Now you guys gotta check this out. Basin, I was like, this is very special. And now we're realizing it's even more special. The trip out of the cave took almost 8 hours and we exited around 3 a.m. after 43 hours underground. We surveyed more than 2 miles and pushed the overall length of Fort Stanton Cave to more than 40 miles. The efforts of the Fort Stanton Cave Study Project and Bureau of Land Management have now made Fort Stanton Cave the 12th longest cave in the U.S. and 48th longest cave in the world. <laughs> 